Titania Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Hello to you, to all of you, to everyone within the sound of my voice, not just on the podcast, but on earth. I like to think that I can project in a theater caliber manner that they're hearing me up in the gods, (laughs) theater terms. I love them all. And I love you all. Welcome. Welcome, friends. It's time once again for Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. That's me. That's my identity in this life. Whom shall I be in the next life? Oh, I hope I'm not a bug. What do you have to do to be reincarnated as a bug? Like really bad stuff, right? Because here's the thing. I was raised Catholic, and there's a lot of strict rules about even, like, white lies and things like that. It's like, you must never lie. You must never take a life. Okay, that I, I will not take a life. Don't worry about it. But I can't lie to save somebody's feelings or something. Or And then, and then if you rack up enough of these sins, they call them. Their word, not mine. You go to hell. What? Here's here's what I would say on my way down to hell if I was going there for lying and masturbating. (laughs) (laughs) On my way down, I would yell up at heaven, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But this other, this karmic wheel, which, by the way, I know zero about, but let's get into it. If I tell a bunch of lies, like if somebody's like, What do you think of my haircut? And I say, it's terrific. It frames your face, all the things you say. But that haircut looks like, haircut looks like a pile of garbage. (laughs) That haircut looks like a pile of garbage. (laughs) What is your major malfunction? I do not like your haircut. Who told you you could get bangs, you pile of shit? (laughs) Guys, everyone loves my new character of haircut drill sergeant. <laughs> is he there at the haircut? Like while the haircut is happening? No, because he would be able to prevent it from happening. And he wouldn't be yelling at you, he would be yelling at the person cutting your hair. This is after this is after it's too late. And frankly, guess what, haircut drill sergeant? You're not helping. I already got the haircut. Now I'm supposed to go back, spend more money to fix it. Because then you go back to the salon. And yeah, I treat myself. I go to a salon. <laughs> I don't go to like the old fashioned barber where it's like, get a, sh- get a shave, get a hot towel and a shave. I did that once years ago before it was a thing back when it was just for strictly old men. And me and my buddy, Tony went in to get a haircut and a shave at Rocco and Elmer's <laughs> in Philadelphia. I think on Bainbridge street. Look it up guys. We're like, let's get shaves. And we got really short haircuts and then shaves. The shaves went on for so long (laughs) that it was like enhanced interrogation technique, except (laughs) no questions were asked. (laughs) It seemed to never end. It would be, the hot towel would be nice. It was like a a weird good cop, bad cop process. (laughs) They put the hot towel on. Oh, that's certainly nice. And the hot lather. And then I think it was Elmer himself would take his, uh, straight razor and just scrape 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 your face I'm like maybe you should sharpen that thing or something this is uncomfortable and then after it was finally over this ordeal tony and i exited rocco and elmer's and we looked in a nearby shop window looked at our reflections and we just stared at ourselves because the haircuts were incredibly short and we just stared in silence until tony finally said he cut off my mole So you'll forgive me if I'm a little straight razor shy ever since that experience. (laughs) Fool me once. Shame on me. 
cut off my friend's mole, <laughs> you're going to hell or coming back as a bug. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part of that. Over there on piano is my friend Eben Schletter. He will be scoring all of our proceedings. What proceedings are those, Paul? Well, I'll tell you right now in the next second. Here I go. What we do is I have a special guest come in. We have a freeform chat inspired by a question from our previous episode's guest. Then myself and some info... Inf- Infrafizer f- pals. <laughs> I have a problem with my F's and my P's. Sometimes it transfose them. Myself and some improviser pals will improvise a narrative story. One story, continuing story over the course of two segments. And guys, I'm going to warn you in advance. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> now it is time to introduce... My special guest, this young lady you have seen on countless television programs, not least of which is the hot wives of Las Vegas. Las Vegas. That's right. Mm -hmm. I knew that locations had changed. Yes, they have. She is one of my favorites and I absolutely adore her. Please say hello to Timberly Hill. Hola. (laughs) Timberly. Even Spanish speakers can say hello. Yeah, I know. I'm bilingual. T- Are you really? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your candor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Timberly, I have a question for you. I want it. From last week's guest. <laughs> yes. Are you curious as to who last I week's I want to know who was? it was, yes. Oh, I'm sure our listener would like to know as well, in which case I would direct all of you to the Spontaneous Nation page at Earwolf.com, where you can see all of our previous episodes and listen to them. Hours of listening pleasure await you. <laughs> the question, Timberly, is what's the worst advice you've ever received? The worst advice I've ever received. Mm-hmm. There's been so much bad advice thrown right? at me to be able to pick out just one. Let me also ask you, uh, is this bad advice, is it usually unsolicited? Oh, it's always unsolicited oh. because I never ask anyone what they think <laughs> about anything. I hate advice more than anyone in the world. Have you always been that way? Always, always. Is I there, cannot stand for people to tell me things. Is there anyone in your life that if you're if you're having some sort of like crisis of like, I don't know what to do here. Is there anyone that you go to and ask their opinion? I talk to my cats a lot. And that's not pretend. I've worked out a lot of problems with the joint staring at my two cats. If you just talk out loud to yourself in a meditative state, you can figure most things out by yourself. You're saying a sort of Wilson the volleyball style conversation. (laughs) Exactly. Only I think Wilson talked too much. I would have liked Wilson to be a little more quiet. Do you feel that Tom Hanks ripped that whole thing off from Bob Newhart, the one-sided conversation where it's like, what's that you say? You say I should get off this island? I always all jokes aside, do think he did. I watched Bob Newhart like there was no tomorrow when I was a kid. I watched it all. You know, it used to come on at night. I watched it nonstop you know at night. You know, it used to come on at it night. Did. Yes, it Yes. Like, used to come like, on at it night used like to be a, a show. TV show. Yes, I am aware of that. <laughs> now, I might be, a, uh, I'm a bit older than you are. Do you, did you ever see his, his first show where he was the psychiatrist in Chicago? No, I never saw that. I only saw the one where he ran the hotel, the Bob Newhart show. That show, hotel. that show is worth seeking out. It's got that great 70s sitcom style to it. <laughs> Excuse me! <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a bit of a tickle in my throat. <laughs> Um, it's a great show. I think it's I think it's called the Bob Newhart Show. Yeah, um, and it's absolutely worth because he out. named all of him show, his shows after himself, didn't he? Yes, and whittling away at his name. It yeah. was the Bob Newhart Show, then Newhart, then Bob. That's right. There yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you will you will sort of reason out what you're going to do by way of asking your cats. Yes, absolutely. I mean, people tell me ridiculous things. I remember um, in uh, high school, I didn't have sex till very late, till I was like 19, because I was terrified. Me too. Yeah. I yeah. was very late. Bloomer. Religious reasons or no? No, not religious reasons. It was religious at all. For I was me. just afraid of what was going to go down. I had no interest in it You know what, though? I, I say religious reasons, but really it was fear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course it was. I was scared. And the religion allowed me to indulge that. And everybody around me had had sex. And I right. remember one of my friends, me asking about that, because I would break up with people every three months. Because you know how teenage boys are. <laughs> right. Like, you're alone with them for three months, and then they're like... 
are we getting into it? We're not getting into it. And if you say you're not getting into it, then it's over. <laughs> you're not a couple anymore. I had more boyfriends than anyone in the world because they didn't have any sex. And I said, I remember asking one of the girls who was a cheerleader and also in the drama class, which I already thought was weird. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you do? Wait, wait, wait. What do you think was weird? The drama class I was weird? I thought it was weird that, that, a, that one of our cheerleaders was in the was also in that the act, drama class. That actually is unusual. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And she would wear her uniform, you know. <laughs> Rub it in class. everyone's faces. Yeah. And we were always like, wow, okay. All right. No. All you girls and the one straight guy who's here. <laughs> exactly. And you're trying to snatch him up. He's all we've got. How dare you? You use a whole football team to choose from. And she said to me, give head. <laughs> You don't have to do anything. She was like, it's the easiest thing. If you don't want to have sex, but you want to stay with them, <laughs> the give head. <laughs> it's the easiest thing. You stay a virgin. It's over fast, she said. And I said, what is this give head? Like, I didn't know give head was a word for blowjob. Right. So I was like, what is give head? And she was like, you know, you take it and you just like wiggle it and <laughs> lick it. Wiggle it. That's what she said. Wiggle it and lick it. And so there I was my very first time with a boyfriend that I did not want to break up with because right. I didn't want to have sex. Sure. Wiggling and like with the tip of my tongue. Were you literally <laughs> wiggling yes, it back? Yes, I thought I was supposed to. I wiggled it and wiggled it. Did I he, never did any of the actual stroking motions that I later learned right. were part of giving. Did he stop you and say, hey, what are you doing? He did nothing. I right. think he enjoyed himself. Sure. I sure. think it was fine for him. Well, how much did he know at that point? And, and I mean, he finished and it was <laughs> fast. Right. I just wiggled it around and I tapped my tongue on the top of it like four times <laughs> and then it was done. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I can give head. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And this, was this a technique that you employed for a while? It was until I saw um, porn because I didn't there know I was doing go. it wrong. There you go. Yes. And then a friend of mine introduced me to porn, which I only saw for the first time like three years ago. Don't judge me. What? It never occurred really? to me to look up porn or to watch it. I, but I, I never thought to. But let me say this. I feel that. Pornography since the since the dawn of the internet, yeah, it, it comes your way whether you seek it out or not. Like I've I've seen accidentally seen so much porn, so much. I wish where it's that like, had happened oh, to me. I <laughs> See, I think you're lucky. I wish that had happened to me. I well, wish look, you had a charmed life. As <laughs> that's what I always <laughs> yes, say. Bumping into porn. That's what I that's always say. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no, I have no choice but to stop what I'm doing and start and jerking just off. Get into it. It's like, well, it'd be rude not but to. But now, me too. Can you imagine what it's like as a, um, a woman who um, discovered masturbation late, discovered sex late, only saw porn a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. I mean, I hurt myself. Like, sure, I, I didn't even know I could have those kind of orgasms. What <laughs> was I didn't. Did you have any kind of sex education as a kid? I did, but you know, it's the book. Right. They, they, they give you, you have sex ed, mm -hmm. which is part of PE class. Yes. So it's only like on Fridays or something. Usually they're showing you like some diseased riddled genitalia <laughs> or something. You're not right. paying any attention. That's even if you go. Most of the time we would skip that and go to Taco Bell. Like I didn't go to bad class. They would show you videos, like weird videos that had nothing to do with sex, like about prom and crashing cars and dying. And, <laughs> and then we had to watch a birth video. And that might have Ugh. been why I I stayed away from boys for so long because sure. that shit is horrendous. Were you afraid of getting pregnant? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> and have that alien push its way out of my body and all of that. It's not beautiful. No. It's not beautiful. What are um, were there girls in your school that got pregnant and had to drop out of oh, school? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was. There were lots of girls who got uh, pregnant mm -hmm. in my school. It was like it was almost normal. And you know they could come to school for like the first three months, and then when yeah. they start showing, they disappear. Right now, see, we we had that in my school, but it was a Catholic school, so it was a huge <gasps> deal. A huge like it was. Beyond just gossip, it was it was a scandal. Ooh. You know, it was a scandal, and it was the same thing. Like you would see the girls start to show, mm -hmm. and then they were gone. And, they would and like at the moment, you're thinking like, is she? Mm -hmm. And then the next day, she's not in school. Yeah, but really, they were just going to study abroad. 
for a semester, <laughs> and then they came back after studying. And so, but you went to, it was not a religious school, right? No, it wasn't at all. That's another reason why everybody's pregnant. I grew up at the beach, in Virginia Beach. You uh -huh. know, for the longest time, we were allowed to wear um, bathing suits uh, to school. <laughs> right. It was, a, you know, if you see a bunch of people walking around half naked, um, some sex happens. <laughs> some sex happens. Do you like the beach? I live for the beach. It's mm -hmm. not my favorite thing now because I grew up on it. Like, if I go on a vacation, I want to go to Wyoming, or I want to see right. mountains or something. I don't care to go to the beach. But now as much, it's not as big a deal to me now because I used to tan, believe it or not. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> and um, if you don't want to just sit at the beach and hang out, I'm not sure. I don't even get what people do there all day. Do you well, just sit and read a book? What I, happens? I am actually perfectly content to sit and read a book at the really? beach. I love just being by the ocean. I, I don't even have to get in. You yeah. know, I do get in, but there is there is such a suspension of disbelief that has to go on in regard to ocean life mm -hmm. because I'm terrified of ocean life. That'll do it. Yeah. And so for me to go into the ocean, it's just like I have to really concentrate on my love of the ocean yes. and the majesty of it. Yes. And I have to not think about things that live in it. But like if a, if I see a fish uh -huh. or if something brushes, brushes my leg, leg, I'm like, that, that's over. It's over. Gotta and get it out. should be. Yeah. And it should be. And my favorite beach is uh, Sullivan's Island where my wife grew up uh, in South Carolina. Yeah. We go there every year for, for, for the summer. And um, – uh, there have been a lot of shark attacks yeah. there lately yeah. on that beach. Yeah, I know. And it's like, well, th there goes that. I Never know. getting in there again. But let me ask you, do you feel like a little bit mm -hmm. those people are asking to get eaten up? I mean, what are you thinking? I think If you that, know there are shark attacks, you know it. It's a regular yeah. occurrence. Yeah. Why do you go out there? I, th I think that it's it's – People don't want to give up on that, and they also want to play the odds. Why not go to another beach? Why not jump in some other water? I think people do that. I think people do that. I don't know. I, Before or after they're bitten? Uh, oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do can't they have imagine. to be afraid first? I have. I, I try to get a little philosophical about it and and play the odds because I have a friend who was bitten by a shark, mm -hmm. so I now have shark insurance. <gasps> oh my god, you're not serious. That there is the shark insurance refers to if you know someone who's been bitten by a shark, the odds are you will never be bitten by a shark because it happened to someone that you know. That is why. Where were they bitten? <laughs> In Hawaii. No, but I mean, where? Like, did they On lose the a limb? On did the they leg. take a chunk out? They took a chunk out, yeah. Wow. And he, he totally fine. Recovered. It was just like literally a bite. It was like a bite and release kind and of thing. Gonna, and is he like, can he sleep? Is he like traumatized he's for no, that? He's totally nightmares? fine. He's totally fine. And has he gone back in the water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy they, smokes. They celebrate. The, they, sell, they call it, it's my friends Aaron and Megan. They call it the shark anniversary. No. They celebrate it every year. Yeah. And they'll have like a big shark cake and stuff like that. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No parts I of mean, that. I mean, I think that if you, if you have something like that happen to you and you survive it, it makes you see life, I think, entirely differently. I ha I know someone who was struck by lightning. So there you go. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It's very different for after that. I mean, there it's a sort of fearlessness. It's like what what could happen to me? Yeah, I've been struck by lightning. If lightning doesn't strike in the same place twice, I'm not likely to get struck twice. Uh, when but I, I don't was, know if that's true. It, well, when I was a kid in the Guinness Book of World Records. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I was obsessed with when I was a kid. I loved it. Yeah. And every year, the new edition me would come too. out. Did you remember the lady with the fingernails? Oh, the so longest fingernails? That disgusted I me for some reason. I loved that book. I loved it too. Do you remember the two fat guys on the motorcycle, the twins? No! <laughs> <laughs> they were they were the fattest people in, in the, the world. world, and they were and they were two twins wearing cowboy hats and sitting on <laughs> motorcycles. <laughs> I will be looking it up. Then, as soon as I get off, there was a guy, a park ranger who looked like Frank Perdue. Do you remember Frank Perdue, the Perdue Chicken guy? <laughs> yes. There was a guy who looked like him, park ranger, holding his hat, which had been singed by a lightning bolt, and he was the man who had been struck by lightning the most times. How many times? Like is seven this? times or something. What? I can't remember, but it was more than two. It's he just like like jumping into bodies of water naked in thunderstorms. Like, how do you get struck that many times? I think it's because he is ten feet tall and has a metal plate in his head. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> so he's always the highest thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's but madness. I think because because he was a park ranger and because yeah. he's out in like I forget which park it was, but uh -huh. he's out probably in open spaces, you know, where lightning strikes and you know. 
just walk around in the Do rain. You think I don't he was know. Special afterwards, because my girlfriend Tommy thought she was powder after she got struck. By Do you lightning. know? They... She thought she had special gifts. She thought she could. She thought she could uh, read minds right. and things. She thought what? it. Made, she thought it made. She thought she had gifts. She thought she could move things with her mind. She did. Tommy Coggins. She thought she had all kinds of gifts. Would she say, "Watch this. I'm going to move this with my mind"? No, but she would say weird. Like you'd be sitting there, and she'd go, "Your favorite color's blue, isn't that?" <laughs> and and I'd it? be like, yes, Tommy, my favorite color is blue, but you know that. <laughs> like, that's not ah. that's not a guess. I've known you for three years. Everybody Your birthday knows is January that. 3rd. Yes, you <laughs> are male with a mustache. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who's next? Thank you, the gift of lightning. Yes, she, it made her. It changed her as a human being. I used to try to find her on Facebook and stuff so I could just see what kind of adult she blossomed into. I want to know so badly what happened to her. I hope she turned into the Long Island psychic. <laughs> she might be Teresa Caputo. <laughs> she changed her name. Oh my Very God. similar name. Wait, what was your friend's name? Tommy. Tommy Coggins. Tommy Coggins mm-hmm. to Teresa Caputo. Same initials. It's very close. It's very close. <laughs> Listen, Tommy, if you're out there, <laughs> and I think you're sensing this is being recorded right now, <laughs> please call in before this podcast has finished recording. We'd love to talk to you online. <laughs> Timberly Hill. The Hot Wives of Las Vegas is on Hulu. Yes, it is. And it's on right now. People can watch it right now. Well, they can watch Hot Wives of Orlando Hot right Wives now. Hot Wives of Orlando right now. And Hot Wives of Las Vegas will come out on August 18th. And it's a lot of the same uh, characters, it's right? It's a lot of this. It's a, the characters are different, but the cast stayed the same. We like oh, to think so of ourselves as playing- the American horror story of Hot Wives. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I didn't know it was different characters. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, great. Different characters. I'm oh, the only fantastic. person who stays the same. Are you? Yes. Because <laughs> I told the girls, I was like, if I show up as anybody besides Feifei on that show, they will right. stone me. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me do anything else on that show but be that ridiculous woman. I was like, I, it, they'll revolt against uh, me. Feifei is an absolute delight. <laughs> they wouldn't an have absolute it any delight. Other way. Yeah. So please, guys, do check out that show because uh, I, I had no idea it was different characters. I'm very excited. Oh, wait. This you is going to be very cool. And Casey uh, Wilson, nine months pregnant. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. With a fake <laughs> fingertip. That's her handicap. She's missing the tip of her pointer <laughs> finger. <laughs> she fantastic. has a prosthetic. Fantastic. It's fantastic. Guys, so much fun. Check it out on Hulu. Kimberly Hill, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. We are going to take a break. Uh, during the break, we will secure a location from Timberly for our improv, and you will meet our improvisers. All of this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns to you. Hi, my name's Ron Scratz. I'm the chief uh, CEO head operating officer of a company called Circle Area. Now, Circle Area is a company that will destroy your website. They'll just tear it down, leaving a circular area in the World Wide Web where we could use that for other things like uh, putting uh, recyclable bottles in there or something. I don't know. Maybe hide some uh, keys. Uh, in case you get locked out of your house. Anyway, I want to tell you, I got to warn you away from my chief competitor, Squarespace. Uh, now, look, a lot of people uh, think they need websites in this day and age uh, for businesses, portfolios, restaurants, whatever. They think, oh, I need a website. You, re- you really don't. I mean, uh, you know, historically, building a website is tough and uh, it should have been that way. Even if you know your way around coding, uh, it should be a frustrating, terrible experience. That's why I got to tell you, Squarespace. They're the worst. They've made it easier to build websites uh, without even trying very hard. And that's obviously I'm doing the opposite of that. So I'm against them. Are you you following this at all? Here's the problem. Squarespace, they provide simple, powerful, and beautiful websites that look professionally designed. Regardless of skill level, there's no coding required. Now, you got to imagine over here at Circle Area, we're going out of our minds and we're saying, why are they doing this? They're making websites easier to make and harder to destroy. (laughs) Well, I mean, (laughs) it's easy to destroy a website you make yourself. Which makes it worse for us because then nobody's calling us to destroy their websites. Now, not only does Squarespace, these guys, they're nuts. They provide you with this intuitive and easy to use uh, tools to create your website. They also have state of the art technology powering your site to ensure security and stability. I cannot tell you enough what an awful idea this is. Again, I run a, a, an opposite sort of website. The thing is, Squarespace. Squarespace has made it. I'm sorry, I'm very emotional. Squarespace has made it 
so you could trust them because millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world trust them too i mean it gets worse and worse with them where does it end i don't like them because i do the opposite thing also check this out for the worst put, put it up uh, high on the list of the worst things about squarespace they give you 24 7 online support and a beautiful website for only eight dollars a month why aren't they charging a thousand dollars which i that's what i wish they would do but they're not they're charging eight dollars a month you can even get a free domain if you buy squarespace for the year that is to quote shakespeare the immortal bard the unkindest cut of all i think that's from <sighs> hamlet you can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. Now, if you're not careful, this might happen. Okay? Be careful. Whatever you do, don't not give them your credit card and don't do it today. And and this is now this is where that gets tricky. If you decide to sign up for Squarespace and you use the offer code PFT, you get 10% off your first purchase. So it's even less money than it would be normally. These guys are devils. They're devils straight from hell. Oh, and if you did that, if you if you went to Squarespace and used that offer code PFT, you, you, I mean, you'd be showing your support for this podcast. I guess I'm in favor of that since they're letting me sort of run a concurrent ad and attack ad at the same time. Uh, but still, I don't know. I feel like they're having me read stuff that's promoting Squarespace inadvertently, and it's kind of contrary to my business needs. I got to rethink my model. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Why did I say that? Hey, guys, did you know that fantasy football was developed during the Cold War? Because President Eisenhower was worried that the Soviets would vaporize our football teams. And what will we do then? We'd play with the idea of them. Well, now it's just for fun. And your fantasy long season football, your season long fantasy football team may be going strong. But you don't have to wait until week 16 to get paid. Put your fantasy skills to the test. Do you have fantasy skills to pay your fantasy bills? Well, put them to the test starting Sunday at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. One-week fantasy means no season-long commitments. What does two-week fantasy mean? No one will ever know. Thank God, by the way. Do you have an injured player? No problem. In In a fantasy football game. Do you have an injured player in your home? I hope you're taking care of him and you're not the cause of the injury. It is like a new season every week, so you're never stuck with the same players. You know how you get sick of seeing the same people over and over again, like the people that live in your home. Your family, I call them. <laughs> what if you could change out your family all the time? Fantasy family? That's for another time, my friends. DraftKings is crowning a new millionaire every week this season. This is where it gets serious. A million dollars is a lot of money, still. You can turn your love of football into a life-changing payday. Unless you're terrible with money, you're going to change it for the worse. Be good with money. Be good with fantasy football. Pick your players, pile up the points, pick up your cash. That is it. Let's go over that again. Pick players, pile up points, pick up cash. That is it. You have never experienced football like this before. Even if you're a football player, Right? You're used to the regular playing of the game on the gridiron, the squared circle, the sweet science. Hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code PFT to play for free at a shot for $1 million in this week's Millionaire Maker event. They call it Millionaire Maker because you get a million dollars, you're automatically a millionaire. You've been made. Not like in Goodfellas when Joe Pesci got shot in the head. You've had time to see that movie. Enter PFT for free entry now, only at DraftKings.com. That is DraftKings.com. That is still DraftKings.com. This is not fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. (laughs) Thanks, Ad. (laughs) Guys, we're back. And better than ever. (laughs) That's my judgment call. I do hope you agree. If you do agree, let us know. If you don't agree, let's keep your mouth shut. I don't need any more negativity from you. Yeah, I'm talking to one specific person. (laughs) You know who you are. Put a sock in it. I hate you. (laughs) That was pretty negative, Paul. I know. You got me. We're not so different after all. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Thank you to Timberly Hill. It is now time to meet our pretend pals. Seated. 
right next to me, her usual seat when she does the show. Every time you sat there? And when I don't do the show. I show up here when no one else is here. That's strange. Do people ever complain when they're trying to do other things here? Oh, yes. (laughs) All right. You know her as the same person I know her as. (laughs) Janet Varney. Janet, hello. Hello. Welcome back to Spontanea Nation. Thank you so much. What's your med- med- medallion that you're wearing? Uh, this is an otter playing with a seashell. Sure it is. Because they're a playful bunch. Is that a, a Victorian brooch? A uh, cameo? No, I don't know. <laughs> is this a cameo? You know how in the Victorian era they used to make cameos of their pet otters? That would be nice, though. Like one of those sort of plaster relief kind of things of an otter in profile. <laughs> I think the question, they otter have done it. Okay. I'll Let's move on. I'll see myself. <laughs> See that kitty corner, kitty, kitty, kitty corner from me. This gentleman, he's been on the show before. Have you sat in that chair before? I've sat in Janet's sat chair. Sat in Janet's chair. Is that yeah. is Janet's was chair? Was I your there? Chair? She was there Did when I got on here, me? and I <laughs> she was she might have been there. Actually. I'm very quiet and unassuming <laughs> when I'm not doing the show. It's possible she was there. <laughs> anyway, he's here now, over there. <laughs> Say hello to Victor Yared. Let's keep it going. Oh, Let's started, keep it going started for the him. applause for himself. <laughs> it's a character. It's a character. It's a character. Yeah, the guy he's called starts... applause starter guy. He's mm, fun. Is that <laughs> James? Is first draft James. name James. <laughs> James. <laughs> I've been working on some new stuff, Paul. I think uh, you're gonna like it. Have you ever auditioned for SNL? I have not. No. I haven't either. Anyone? Have you? Oh, no, no. Mm-mm. It seems scary to me. It seems like they try to make it scary. I couldn't, I couldn't understand why you were asking me that. And then I have backtracked in my mind now and realized it's because we were talking about James, a character. Yeah, a <laughs> second ago. <laughs> I know, but I didn't, I didn't make the connection. Are you exhausted from that backtrack? It might have been, yeah. It was a lot for me to process. <laughs> wow. I hope things don't go this fast during the does improv. This, does this mean that time moves more quickly for you than for other people or more slowly? It for jumps you around for me. Okay. Yeah, mm. sure. I'm just thinking about breakfast. Oh, what did you have for breakfast? I didn't. Honestly, Victor. Yeah, I know. Breakfast is the most important. This meal might have of the been. Day. This might be the worst introduction. Have you Have you Either eaten anything? You've not eaten anything today. I had a yogurt. Oh, a yogurt. Yeah. What flavor yogurt? It was a strawberry. I'm saying flavor with a U. <laughs> it was a strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah. Strawberry yogurt. Yeah, it was strawberry. Fruit on the bottom. Yeah, there was. <laughs> it was a separate. It's actually a separate part of the thing, and you. When did they come up with that scam where you have to do all that work to eat a yogurt? <laughs> I, You know, I don't know. It's the first uh, brand that I've ever had to do it. I don't want to say it on air. Say it. Say it. Maybe it'll become a sponsor. Well, I guess I said I don't want to say it because I couldn't think of what the name was. <laughs> oh, must be nice. I don't even know what brand of yogurt I eat. <laughs> Let's clap him out, guys. Let's clap. <laughs> James is back. Thanks. Oh, James is now James, here. James. <laughs> okay, James. I forget what your one characteristic was already. <laughs> he, he's a applause starter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. If I had kept my original name, you would have known Victor that. Silence. Okay. Seated across from me. <laughs> now this is, you've sat in this seat before. Yeah. Can this be interesting to the listener? I've really gotten around the table. <laughs> I know you've sat there. Uh-huh. And I know you've sat here. Mm-hmm. I'm pointing to different places, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Say hello to Colleen Smith. Yay! Oh, James always hey! starts applause for himself. It, for it makes yeah. sense. It's his motivation. It a self-starter. I'm Colleen, sorry. how are you doing? I'm really good. Today is my dog's birthday. I was just, I swear to God, I was going to ask, how is Blue? He's adorable. He is 10 years old today. Now, 10 times 7 is 70. Yeah, but they found, that turns out not to be true. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And what whole- is it now? I don't. I think like the first years are that, but then it's kind of like dogs just live as long as they live. And then they also <laughs> say that your dog isn't supposed to get like curmudgeony and older. As, as long as they're healthy, they're kind of like young until they that is, die. That is certainly what? what's happened with my dog. Really? I'm so relieved to hear it because he's his behavior has changed none, and he's 12. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Unless they get like arthritis or something's wrong, right. they'll act like just a nut. Or if you're if you've tamed them, then they're good. But my dog is not tamed. <laughs> tamed them. <laughs> or what does trained, that mean? You know, trained them. What does he? What does he? What does he not do that he should do? Well, he does not listen to us. He doesn't wait to get out of the car. He like barrels out and scratches us. Um, <laughs> he. Wait, wait, wait! What? <laughs> what, what he'll sit in the sit, back. What's the scenario? So you you park, and he is aware that we're getting out of the car. Right. And he's in the back seat, and then he gets up into the front seat on your lap, and you're like, no, and you're trying to push to him back. try to get out. 
out the to door. try to get out the door. And then you open the door and uh, and he bolts out, but it's like, you know, he's got claws, so he gets you. What's with this dude? He's real excited. He's a Labrador. That's all they are, is excited. Does he hate the car? No, he just loves the outside. Sure. He wants to go somewhere and smell and pee. He's a real outdoorsman. Yeah. I hope it doesn't get struck by lightning like that park ranger. He won't, I promise. <laughs> Do dogs ever get struck by lightning? I think they're smarter. They probably know to like get away from it. And they go under the porch like Sounder. Also, yeah. I think the pads on their paws are made of rubber. <laughs> I don't know much about animals. <laughs> but that's where th- rubber comes from. You Natural think they're- rubber. That's yeah. You mine it off of a dog's paw. Do so you think animals are mostly organic materials? <laughs> <laughs> but there might be some stuff in there that we can use for our own purposes. <laughs> We're going to learn a lot about each other today. <laughs> As we do our little improv, <laughs> that's condescending. <laughs> what we're going to do is a lot of fun, and you guys should respect it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'm assuming the lack of respect on behalf of the listener. <laughs> hey, guys. Respect. We tr- yeah, thanks, James. Huh. Respect. Colleen, very slow to clap for respect. <laughs> guys, we have our location. Tim's gave us our location, and it's it's... A very specific location. Here it is. Oh, before I give you the location, I always forget to do this first. In, to aid our storytelling, we use sound effects. We use sound effects to move us around in time and space. If we are going to cut to a scene that is happening concurrently to a scene that's already happening, just moving sideways in time, you will hear this sound effect. That means cut to. Whoosh, now we're over here. Whoosh, now we're over there. Get it? If we're going to go backwards in time, someone's having a memory, or we're going to learn more about how something came to be, we're going to hear this flashback sound effect. If you don't recognize that as a classic flashback sound effect, I feel sorry for you and the American school system. (laughs) Flashback. If we're going to return to the present day from a flashback, or we're going to go into the future... We will hear this mysterious future sound effect, a flash forward. Right? Mm. Everyone gets it. Mm. We are going into the future. It's got lyrics. <laughs> it's the only one that has lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, and uh, all the improvisers can hit those buttons at any time. And we're very excited. Uh, we'll post a picture online. Ryan, Engineer Ryan, has made us an actual physical soundboard with buttons big buttons that light up thank you, James. Buttons. thank you James buttons and it's I, I could not love it more it is absolutely fantastic and it's the thing that I dreamed of when I first started this podcast but it took <laughs> it's that is that is true that is actually what I wanted I was like I want I want to have like big buttons that people can slam down <laughs> and nobody knew how to do it and then Ryan oh, who's my. an angel straight from heaven he figured it out wow. he figured it out it's gorgeous it is, isn't Thanks, it? Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, he whispered, no problem. <laughs> He's very gentle. <laughs> Guys, here's our location. Submitted by Timberly Hill. It is the Garden of Eden. <gasps> the Garden of Eden. Oh, my. We take you now to the aforementioned Garden of Eden. Hey. Um, oh, sorry. I was, thought you were gonna. What? No, you go ahead. No, I don't. I don't mean to. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Adam. Uh, oh, I'm uh, Amit. So nice to. Lovely to uh, meet you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big garden. Yeah. There's only. I just thought more people would. You know. That's hey what, guys, I'm to... Cheryl. Oh hi. Oh. Hi hi Cheryl. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. This is Adam. I mean. Yeah. Hey. Hey, We're, what's going on? We just met too. So. So we, we just blinked into existence. You didn't so. miss anything. <laughs> we, you know. No, I saw you. I saw you guys blink. It was crazy. Oh, crazy. oh so you've been here a while. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, do Cheryl, you Cheryl. Here, uh, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl. Oh, I. Cheryl, introduce me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is um, Snayton. He's. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's part snake. Oh, hi. Part devil. Nice to meet you. That's right. Not to be confused That's with right. Satan, though. No, There's been no, a whole no, no, no. thing Please. about how he oh, takes the form of boy. the blah, blah, blah. I think we know yeah. who came first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Snayton. this was, I, I think I was sort of a first draft. Uh, but you're, part, am, you're only part devil. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. See how I'm a snake, but I have horns? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That seems safe. So you're like a, a griffin or a, a hippogriff. A what? You know, like a hybrid of other animals. To like it like, like it runs on more efficient energy? No, you know, just um, <laughs> a one animal and another animal combined to Is create Is there more a, stuff like that? I thought it was just me. I don't know how you guys know more than we do when you just blinked into existence. Oh, I mean, I came fully loaded. I mean, I'm I'm an adult female. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. Yeah. What are some of your perks? Um, Well, I've got this uh, thing called a vagina. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, uh, if it's properly uh, inseminated, it uh, gives birth to a mini-me in uh, about nine, ten months. People lie. Pregnancy is actually about a ten-month-long process. Like a little version of you? Yeah, yeah, and then it grows, and if it's a, a girl like me, it can do the same thing, like an assembly line. Sure. It might not be a girl like you, though, but you said it would be exactly like you. It might be a, a boy. It might be like uh, Adam. Oh, man, you're so lucky. All I have is this uh, thing, and uh, I don't even know. I just wiggle it around sure. a mm-hmm. little bit. and yeah. uh, I'm trying to get somebody to tap their tongue on it four times, but I... Hmm. The snake's Does that got unlock a tongue? Some I, do sort have, of, uh, I do have a tongue. It's forked. Is that a thing? Is that a problem for you? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I. That's that's all right. Can I can I ask mm-hmm. why four times? Ah, like uh, Eve was just saying, you know, you sure. kind of come preloaded with a few a few things. Yeah. Uh, I think the first two uh, kind of get you ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It kind of mm-hmm. lets you know something's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The third one you can just enjoy, and then the fourth one, I think you it takes you. You enjoy it a little too much. So let's, oh. let's g- 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 guide me through those steps yeah. again. So the first one. First you wiggle it. Wiggle it. Yeah. You just wiggle it around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, side to side. You could do circles. Right. You just, it doesn't make a springy sound, but if you imagine a springy sound while you're doing it, okay. I think that would get the right. Right. And then step number two? <laughs> uh, then you just tap it with your tongue four okay. times. Now, I tell you what, dude. Just, I, can, I can do the tongue tap. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do the wiggle. He doesn't I'm have sorry. hands. I don't have hands. I don't have hands. I mean, I, I suppose I could coil myself around it, but I'm afraid I might choke it. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the wrong idea. Whew. So, I guess I would offer you guys something to eat. We don't have that much food. I mean, I don't, mm. I don't know what you guys eat. I eat apples. Yeah. Um, it's not a thing for us. Oh. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, I'm pretty... I'm we pretty actually, we heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but can I tell you something? You're not missing much. I know. They're right? not that great. Yeah. Ah, oh, when you say that, it makes me want to eat one. I know. No, this is, they're Macintoshes. Sounds like if they were pink ladies or galas. You're downplaying. I, I can wish tell they were when you're downplaying. You know I what I mean? Fugees. So that'd be so tart and crisp. Yeah. These yeah, are yeah. very mealy. They're uh, give it to me. Give it to me. I want it. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Oh, Mortals, look at Mortals, that. Look at that. What have ye done? Oh. It is I, the archangel Misphysiel. Uh-huh. You oh. have broken God's law, the one thing he asked you not to do, and you have done did it. Why, mortals, why? I, I don't know, Misphysiel? Misphysiel? Misphysiel. I'm not like it's. I'm not a substitute teacher. <laughs> it's mitz physiol. I thought you were standing. If memory in. serves, no. you did have to substitute teach once. Everybody, All everybody, right, teacher. settle yeah. down. Yeah. Settle down, everybody. <laughs> settle down. Ms. It's me. It's not Miss Physio. I wrote it on the board. It's Miss Physio. I know, but I erased it and changed the letters. And now it's Miss Physio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you kids waiting to be born are the worst. I hope that this whole Earth experiment is a failure and I can go back to just hanging out, singing praises to God all day long. Miss Physio. Miss Physio. Miss Physio. What Ms. is it? Physio. What is it, Ms. unformed Physio. blob? What do you want? I forgot. Yeah, I'll bet you did, you weird unformed blob. <laughs> Miss Fizio, can I have lunch with you today? Oh, oh boy, this is sad. Hold on a second, kids. I got to talk to this weirdo. Um, no, you can't have lunch with me. You can't have lunch with teachers. I know you are. But look, maybe there's a kid who will be your friend when we're not in school. No, doubt it. None of us are going to be your friend. Hey, I didn't think you could hear me. We're on foreign blobs. We can hear everything. Why are we even doing this school? Yeah, so we discontinued that program. 
Anyway, you mortals are in big, hold, big. Tr- hold yeah. on. Oh yes, I have a question, Eve. Yeah. Um, I didn't eat the apple. I was just hanging out. If I had pockets, my hands would be in them. I, granted, I wasn't paying attention to what was going on mm-hmm. from the beginning, but yeah. clearly you made him do it. Oh, right? Oh, no, I'm I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. I'm pretty sure I was actually entirely silent during it. Oh, but I don't, I don't know, know. You're that. a woman and he's a man. I mean, you yeah. know. Probably what happened. I'm just kind of filling things in. I'm no Columbo, but I think what happened is you suggested that he eat the apple and he had no choice but to do it because you suggested it. God is displeased with you. There's going to be some troubles. Hey, so what? Uh, uh, I left my dog in the car. Uh, um, uh, I just have one more question. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Snaketon? Uh, yes. Uh, in my notes, it says uh, you are in the vicinity of the apple. You, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> By the way, I'm Detective Columbo. Yes, I, I forgot. I, I was just... <laughs> Staring at your trademark rumpled raincoat. In my, this is the eye that sees. Yes, this is the eye right. that doesn't see. That's right. I forgot that the. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I hate to interrupt, but I wanted to point out that this man is uh, not Columbo. I am the real Columbo. Are this you, man has are been you sure? posing as me. Oh no! Uh, and uh, I wanted to come in and ask him a few questions. They're just. I just have one more question. Oh, Where did on. I put my card? Hey hey guys, it's me, Kojak. I'm here to solve a mystery. <laughs> Now listen, you guys. Hold on. This is this is a cold case, isn't it? This happened thousands and millions of years ago. Hey, there's no cold cases, only cold hearts and murderers. Also, I've been alive for a long time. Memory serves. I played an angel in something that may or may not have been who, a documentary. Who are you now, by the way? <laughs> Let me just ask you. If that's you more that's more. Columbo. Don't you know anything? Hey, want a lollipop? <laughs> Well, you know, one of these days, uh, that Columbo is going to solve my cold case, and my uh, I will be remembered in the annals of history as a hero and not a villainess. Well, I actually be. know that is because as a time traveler, of course, I've seen that all come to be. So yeah, I just Cheryl's wanted to come back time- to where the beginning was so I could sort of be the know-it-all from the start. Like, no one here is going to know more than I know. <laughs> it's almost like I'm psychic. Cheryl, you're kind of rubbing people's faces in it. Yeah. It's hurtful, Cheryl. Yeah. It is hurtful. I'm still here, by the way, guys. Is that Miss Fizzle? Miss M- Miss Fizzayel. Right. Look, we don't pick our names. Angel, come forth to me. Who me? Yes. What? What is it, Gabriel? It is time for you to be named. Okay. I name you... Please be a good one. Please be a good uh, one. Please be mitzvah Jake. Mitzvah Leo. What is that? Uh, mitzvah Leo. I can't even... You're just sort of mumbling it. Yeah, uh, Mitzvah Leo. Mitzvah Leo? Yes, yeah, that, that's it. Can I ask... Mm-hmm. Can I be Jake? Nope. Not... Really? Jake is much more of a rugged angel type. You're more... I'm not rugged? No. I got a flaming sword. I'm sorry, you have no genitals. No one does! I know, but it's real obvious on you. <laughs> well, what if I wear a looser robe? Oh, I think that would just compound the problem. You've got a narrow frame. Yeah. And not broad shoulders. I'm lithe and ready for action. Ooh, one would say lithe, one would say toothpick-like. Hmm. Well, boy, I just got blinked into existence and already I've been insulted eight times. Mm-hmm. I know it seemed like we cut to you getting named, but I know that happened a long time ago. That might get fixed later. Sure. Listen, Cheryl, you're you're. It's not fair of you, I think, to to lord it over everyone that you're a time traveler and you know everyone's fate here. No, but I promise not to change anything. Like I could have said something about you know when Eve was tempting Adam to eat that apple, which she very clearly was. I could have said, "Don't eat it, Adam. Don't eat it." But I stayed out of it. Sure, I complained about the taste of the apple, but mm-hmm. I didn't change the course of history. I- I'm really very harmless. I'd like to make a point um, that if time travel is built into history, it means you cannot change the course of history because it's already part of the predestined plan. This is true. There's a lot of predestination stuff going on. Hey, guys. uh, Sorry, I've been keeping this to myself since I ate that apple. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm pretty sure we're naked. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that when I said I didn't have pockets. Wait, so you knew? 
Yeah, I mean, I know I'm not wearing clothes. I'm aware of a breeze. How do you feel about it? Pretty shameful, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like before it was cool, but now you ate that apple and it's not cool. Yeah, I was like, hey, maybe somebody could just wiggle this and tap a tongue, and then now it's like... Ooh, I wanna... don't even get into that yeah, shamefulness. I've got I to gotta hide this away. You were going to let a snake a s- <laughs> snake do it. Yeah, yeah, I was seriously entertaining that. Not just a snake, but a snake that's part devil. Yeah. Not cool, Adam. Mm, well, uh, there's some large leaves over there. You want to sure. slap that on? Might as well. I'm probably going to hell anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Ugh. So, uh, is this it? This is my only option? There's not a, another... You yeah, know. you guys are pretty much stuck with each other. Yes, you will be fruitful and multiply. Oh, You'll you make a bunch of so babies. You are going to be so sore, honey. It's not going to be cool. Can I, can I have them in a litter like puppies? No, nope. we actually have a video that we'll show you that will shock and appall you. Oh, it's okay. not, oh, it's not a beautiful let's, thing. Let's, it's let's, not let's, a beautiful thing. Let's put that on. Okay, sure. Let's watch the video. Welcome to the miracle of birth. First people of all time, this is what it looks like. (laughs) Just push. Just push. It's okay. (laughs) Look at all that stuff. (laughs) You're not even trying. Just do it. (laughs) I feel like I'm being eaten by a shark. (laughs) Your birth will be coached by several people. (laughs) Get it out. Get it out. Push, goddammit. (laughs) It's nothing but disgusting. That sounds all right. Pretty I mean, good video, right? Great production value. Um, you're ne- you're never ever ever getting that near this because if that's what it looks like. Well, that was fun. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know I was gonna do it, did you? <laughs> no. no, I had uh, no idea. Surprise! <laughs> yes. I'm not looking so bad over here, am I? Cheryl, I gotta say, you have moved to number two as the worst person on earth right now. <laughs> Thank you. I knew that was coming. Hi, guys. Um, I don't want to be weird or anything, but everybody forgot about Lilith, didn't they? Oh, hi, Lilith. Um, yeah, Adam, I'm your first wife. Do you remember me? Yeah, hi, Lilith. I didn't know you were still here. Yeah, conveniently forgot. Why did it work out between you two? Just tap your tongue on it. I'm not going to do that. That's tap disgusting. Tap your tongue on it, please. No. no. Just, just do it. Can you do it fine? Why times? don't you do it? You mm-hmm. tap your tongue on it. Do some stretches I can't tap and my try. own tongue on it. Um, I guess, well, well, I don't know. Try harder. Oh, yeah, great advice. I tried. <laughs> okay. You don't even care about me. And Yeah, I, of course I don't care about you. We're two complete strangers in the middle of a, a oh, garden. We're strangers. Eden. We're married and we're strangers. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have any choice. We're just predestined. Just because you don't have choice doesn't mean that it does, didn't happen, that it's not real. Yeah, I but- almost love you. <laughs> you don't even know what love is. You don't know what love is, stupid. That's not an art. Lilith, the original feminist. Lilith. Yeah. Now that you're here, mm-hmm. what happens to Eve? Oh, yeah. What does happen to me? Adam, what are you going to do here? I mean, this is awkward for you, right? You're both your, your, your wife and your ex-wife are here. Let me guess what happens. The two of you get together and talk about how shitty I am. And then all of a sudden, now Eve feels like she shouldn't be married to me anymore. And there's a door, and you can leave anytime you want. Am I in the neighborhood? That sounds really good to me. Yeah, I would like to try that, too. Okay, we're going to go off for a little while. Yeah, we're going to be back in a little bit. Okay, so we'll see you later. Hold on a second, idiots. This is not supposed to be happening. Cheryl, time traveler, (sighs) you have interfered with the predestined time stream laid down by Almighty God. (laughs) I'm sure I didn't. That would explain why it seemed like a cut to and not a flashback of the naming thing. That's exactly right. You mess with the space time continuum. We may not have to go back and fix that after all. No, I don't think we have to Uh, fix it. You guys, I would not do that because if I did that, that would sort of deconstruct the entire future and we could all end up dead tomorrow. And that's like really bad. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I might have. Cheryl, you have unleashed. Countless paradoxes upon ancient Earth. Oh, um, Miss Fizzle. Miss Fizzle. Miss Fizzle, yes. Right. Adam. I know what to do. What do we do? We can... I'd lo- s- Hold on. I want to be sarcastic about it. I'd love to hear this. 
Go ahead, guy who's like three weeks old. You know, I number one, don't love your tone. <laughs> I'll bet uh, you don't. It's offensive. Number two, I don't think you had to say that before you were sarcastic, because I can recognize sarcasm. That was oh, for the yeah. benefit okay. of the other people. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what it's I was going to suggest, mm-hmm. well, semantics, what I was going to suggest. What's that a damn? Go ahead. Oh, How do you like it? Oh, boy, it's hard to talk <laughs> with you. Uh, I just want to send her back to the future. Huh. It's not that hard. I'm pretty sure there's a lightning storm coming any minute. All we have to do is pull a thing onto a clock tower and run our rope to the street. You guys, I can only run up to like 80 miles an hour. Adam, I think you make a good point. Let's send Eve back to the future. (gasps) Is that what you meant? Yeah, I literally said that. Okay, I just... Oh, there's, this guy! There's three women here. I wanted to make sure... I apologize. I thought the you right were talking one. about no, me. I was talking about Cheryl. Was talking no about kidding, Cheryl. You thought it was all about you. <laughs> Instead of all about Eve? <laughs> D- despite that... <laughs> I actually thought we were talking about Cheryl. It's not important. You did, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we all thought we were talking about me. We all yes, thought we were talking about Cheryl. We all thought we were talking about Cheryl. But Miss Fizzle, you're the one that knows. Miss Fizzle. Eve. Uh-huh. I have no choice because mm-hmm. of the weird time stuff that's going on. <laughs> uh-huh. The timeline has changed, and you're going to the 21st century. Okay. Uh-oh. What's happening? Eve from the Bible in the 21st century? I think she's going to find that things are different than they were in Bible times when she was one of the only people on Earth. We're going to find out where her journey takes her. One spontaneous nation. Returns after this ad, which you should listen to. Howdy. This is Sam Elliott for Lisa Mattresses. Lisa's done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience. You know the one. You lay down on the mattress to test it out. Someone comes along and shaves off your signature mustache. Now you look weird and you gotta shoot a movie the next day. Something about... The White House, and you're an advisor to the president or the vice president. Look it up. Well, Lisa has created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. To put that in scale, it's slightly smaller than my mustache. This 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes and is crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling, supportive comfort. It's nice to be cooled and supported. Sometimes you get one, you don't get the other. I recall on the set of masks, share with a supportive and cooling presence, while Eric Stoltz merely offered support. Not cool, Eric. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. Sometimes you gotta take a risk. Like being in the movie Roadhouse. I know people like that movie, but guess what? It's not actually good. It's just ridiculous. And Lisa's like the Tom shoes for mattresses. For every 10 they sell, they donate one to a shelter. That's pretty good. As good as my performance in The Big Lebowski. Another movie I'm kind of iffy about the rating of. Some people, they hold it in very high esteem, but... uh. Me, Sam Elliott, the actual actor? I don't know. Go to l-e-e-s-a dot com slash pft and enter promo code pft at checkout to get $75 off. Take it from me. That's a good deal. I'm Sam Elliott, and I have a big mustache. Attention! Attention! Announcement! Announcement! Thank you, announce bot. Hey, everybody. It's Paul F. Tompkins. The next Spontaneous Nation Live is happening... Saturday, October 3rd at Largo with the Coronet. These live shows are so much fun. It is just like the studio show, except we're actually up on our feet. We're moving around. You're seeing everything happen live. Uh, There's so much fun. And this time our improvisers are going to be, oh, it's my old friends from No You Shut Up, the team behind episode six, Dracula's Bedroom, Drew Massey, Colleen Smith, and Victor Yared, three of my favorite people on earth, and our special interview guest is from the Bengals, Susanna Hoffs. What? Yes, this is a big deal. 
She is amazing. She is delightful. Uh, she is a great talker too. I'm 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 really excited to interview her. Um, and as always, there are special moments that happen in the live show that do not get podcast. You have to see them in person. And Susanna Hoffs and I are going to sing a song together. That I it's a crazy selection. I'm very excited about it. Um, so come and see this, you guys. It's nothing but a good time. We do the show on its feet, running around. After the show, we do a meet and greet. We'll have a table set up. Come and say hi. We'll sign stuff, whatever, or you can just say hello. Um, and there's posters by Nathan Diffie for sale. Nathan Diffie does these posters every month, and he does posters for pretty much every episode of the show so far. Um, he's an amazingly talented guy, and this poster he's done for the October show. Please go to the Facebook page and look up uh, this poster in particular because it is amazing. Um, and we'll have those actual posters for sale and free stickers for tickets. Go to paulftompkins.com slash live uh, for Nathan Diffie. Look them up online. If you have any graphic needs, that's Nathan Diffie D I F F E E. And for free stickers, come to the show Saturday, October 3rd, paulftompkins.com slash live. Hello. Hello. Who are you, strange woman? Uh, my name is Eve. What? Like from the Bible? Oh, yes, you've really hit the nail on the head. It's my favorite book. Really? Is it a popular book? It's pretty popular with a lot of people. Oh, they use it for different things. Really? What What do they use it for? Oh, some people justify murder with it. Oh, that makes sense. It <laughs> Does it? Well, uh... We're still trying to figure that out. In my day and age, things were kind of... Well, wonky is what I would say. <laughs> You're quite <laughs> quite an amazing young person. Thank you. What is your name, sir? My name? Uh-huh. Not important. Okay. How did you... <laughs> you seem like a figure from a movie that will magically transport me to somewhere and then eventually turn into an angel. Somebody played by maybe Brian Doyle Murray or... <laughs> Somebody else Keep of going. that ilk. Right. That uh, generation of actor. Yeah, a, a Peter Falk, if you will. Columbo? Yes. You want to hear my Columbo impression? Yes, please. I've heard some bad ones, so I'd like to hear some good ones. Pardon me. One more thing. Are you the killer? That doesn't What'd sound you think? like Columbo at all. Oh, it's weird, because I, when I do it, I hear Columbo so clearly. Weirdly, you sound more like Columbo when you're not being Columbo. <laughs> I get that a lot. Okay. Well, um, I've been sent to your time, present day, I guess, um, to fix a wrinkle in time that has caused a rupture that has allowed a woman who's not in scripture at all to exist in the Garden of Eden, um, a weird, messy, divorce-like situation, and parallel time schemes where angels get named. This is very complex sounding, uh -huh. but it's right up my alley. Okay. I'm a scientist, and I love time shit. Oh. <laughs> What kind of science do you do? I do the science mm -hmm. of powering stainless steel automobiles uh -huh. with pure cocaine. That sounds like great science. It's a pretty good science. And uh -huh. sometimes I'll take the cocaine. Uh-huh. Does that help you think? I like to think that it does. Okay. Now, your lady friend next to you seems to be... No. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, don't call me a lady until you know whether I'm a lady or not. Right, Doc? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Do you think just because he's wearing an androgynous puffy vest <laughs> that he's a lady? Yeah, that and um, I come from a, a land where uh, up until now there was no sin, so you assumed the best of all people. So when I meant lady, I just implied class and clout and a general air of grace. Oh, I think I think so because of your diminutive stature and your, your very polite Canadian manner, yeah, people think I'm you're not, a woman. I'm, I'm not that tall. That's true. I do play mean guitar, though. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm um, over seven feet tall. That's the size we were in the beginning. Well, you're a, you're, you're a lot of lady to love. Do you have to worry about being struck by lightning? Lightning? Well, well, so far, we haven't experienced any of the hardships that you people experience all the time. Um, so I haven't been struck by lightning, but I bet you Adam's getting into some hijinks back and back in time. <laughs> back and back in time. And here comes number four. He, he, you not? Are you gonna do that every time? Almost done. Almost. 
Do I do I have to be here for this part? Oh. Hey. Whew, that was gruesome to watch. Oh, I... thank you, Snake. Yeah. I don't know what I. Why I didn't leave? I could have left at any time. Yeah, sure. Why didn't you leave? Just sat through that. (laughs) Who's rude? I know. I was here too, and I don't know why. I just there's nothing else to do. There's no. Ooh, snake. Ooh, snake. Go again. No. Ooh, snake. What? Already? You go again. You guys. uh, There's something rolling in. I mean, I'm assuming it's rolling is the term. Um, (laughs) There's they the clouds are dark and they're coming towards us. Yeah. That's a monsoon, you guys. What? Ah. Great, Lilith. You really screwed things up. Lilith just, does it again. I'm just pointing out what's happening. Oh, classic Lilith. What is it with women, right? Ugh. <laughs> Everything they do is a problem. The only one I ever liked was that Mitz Fitzel. <laughs> is that what it said? Mitzel Flicks? That was, that was, was an angel. Yeah. Angels don't have sexualities. Yeah. Oh, she had a nice rack. I think they... Oh, boy. <laughs> I think that was just a loose-fitting tunic. God, Lilith. Why are you always attacking, attacking? That guy sounds like a real jerk. He sounds like he ended up in a better place. <laughs> yeah, I did end up in a Hold better up. place. Is that what you were going to say, son? Yeah, sorry, I just had a, a coughing fit. <coughs> a tickle in my throat. <laughs> you know what I was thinking, though? Um, just because I'm vaguely psychic, I feel like I'm connected to the past and to the present via a storm cloud. And that somehow, if I can get struck with lightning or somebody else gets struck with lightning, or I can find the modern day equivalent of the time traveling woman from the past and get her struck with lightning, could, that we can somehow wipe out her existence. She'll never invent the time traveling thing and can, nothing bad will ever happen. Can I ask you a question? Uh huh. Is it possible? That the person who stole our stainless steel car, his ex-wife Cheryl, is the <gasps> same person that you're talking about. Yeah, is that ringing any bells, whoa, Cheryl? Whoa, 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 whoa. Doc, Shh. Doc, Doc, are you hearing this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I heard it. I'm standing right next to you. Cheryl is the name of the lady. Does she have a, a, a fork-tongued snake friend who's part devil, part snake? I think so. Yes. Snake. I mean, she does have a snake that has horns. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes! I think we could we could kill two birds with one stone here. Literally kill them. That's right. We have to murder Cheryl. <laughs> and the snake. So, in order to go back in time, mm-hmm. what we've got to do is uh-huh. get struck by lightning? <laughs> or have the idea? Yeah, because she's got the car. Right. So we have to find a storm cloud. That's the storm cloud that connects to the past storm cloud and ride through the storm cloud. Can either of you fly? Um, I mean... Not... I, mean, I know an angel who can. Oh. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I am being summoned to Earth in the 21st century. It is time for the, for you to go. You still can't say my name. This is bullshit. Go! Miss Fizzael. Miss Fizzael. Your manifest destiny, which is a terrible thing, sure. is not what I'm about to talk about. Your just regular destiny is to go down and correct the ills of time. Okay. It's Miss Fizzile. Say Ms. Fizz- it. Uh, Miss Fizzile. Oh. Mortals, it is I, the angel, Jake. Jake the angel. You don't seem like oh, a Jake. Hey, uh, hey, Jake, what's going on? Thank you, no, mortal wait, I know Canadian. you. I know you. You're Miss Fizzile. Yes, it's Miss Fizzile. I'm the angel. I am here to aid you in your quest to write the timeline. Can you, Ms. Fizzile, take the three of us upon your back, through a storm cloud, back to the back? That's four of us, Miss Fizzile. I just want to point out that... who's this now? Like you don't know, butthead. (laughs) Oh no, it's that bully! I thought I felt a wind in the door. I was hiding in the back seat with this here magazine. (laughs) What's that magazine you've got? Well... It allows me to win sports games and the like. Some call it an all, man. Hey, why don't you... Hey, Jif, no one asked you here. Uh, <laughs> why don't you take a long walk off a short pier? And it's pronounced gif. Why don't you make like a lamp and turn off... Hey, all right. I feel as if you've suffered some severe head trauma. Hey, listen. That Miss Fizzle lady's supposed to take us on a trip, right? <laughs> The angel? It's Fizzile? Yeah. That'll be even better. And I can pick up some more ancient almanacs and win an even bigger bet. 
All right, let's take a quick vote. Mm-hmm. All in favor of allowing Jif to come along. Say, well, well, oh, oh, go ahead. I was just going to point ahead, out Eve. that Jif, if Jif gets an ancient almanac, it won't help Jif at all predict future things. So That's probably true. Yeah. No, it's 100% true. <laughs> Because if well, I got an I alm- beg your pardon. It's 100% true. I just true. want to quickly say that you're the only one who seems to know what's going on, Eve. I just want to thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad you're so here. confused. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Why okay. is it a vote? Can't I just go? Nope. What well, are you, is your storm, your big storm cloud doesn't have room for a fourth? It's got to be a vote because I'm supposed to carry four <laughs> fucking people? Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, well, I vote no. Wow. Didn't see that coming from I, the girl. <laughs> I vote yes, but tentatively. I vote yes, because it seems like if anybody's expendable in a story like this, it's got to be the guy who gets added last. So I feel like it increases our chances of surviving. Also, I have this sweet vest, which up until now I didn't know why I was wearing. Now I know it's for the storm. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's two to one. Okay. Miss Fizzle, looks like I'm coming. I guess so. Everyone, hop on my back. <laughs> Yay! Here we are. Here we go. Flying into the sky. Look, there's a storm cloud. Yeah, I see it. No kidding. It's gigantic. It's there's the a lot sky. of lightning shooting oh. around in that thing. Are you sure it's safe? That's the storm cloud we have to go to. That will send us back into the past of Bible times. Every- Is that where we're supposed to go? Yes, we're going okay, to Bible good. times. Good. Okay, good. All right, Miss Fizzael. Set course for right over there! Yes, I'm already flying that way. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheryl's never gonna know what's coming for her. <laughs> yeah, oh, whoa, you're gonna beat her up! <laughs> I can't wait till you two have it out. <laughs> I can't wait to see this tiny man-child beating up my ex-wife. Nobody hurts the feelings of my friend, the doc! All right. Here we are, flying into the storm cloud. Get ready to get struck by lightning. Ta-da! Oh, you guys are back. That's yes. great. Uh, oh, sorry, Miss Fizzle. That's a sarcasm. I'll say it beforehand so you recognize it. Um, so let me guess. I'm just going to go out on a limb. And I'm going to guess that you guys are back here to send maybe Cheryl into the future, like I was suggesting like an hour ago, instead of randomly taking Eve. Is that... Who's this creep? Here? Uh, he's the guy who does everything wrong and then uh, blames it on me. I'm her Except husband, when he wants you to jerk. take credit. Wait, you're, you're Adam. Yes. Yeah. I'm your, I guess, your grandson after a, a fashion. Many times removed. Hello, Remit. Oh. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Cheryl, did you get my check? I didn't, and if I had, I probably wouldn't have stolen the car, would I? I sent it, so there was no need for you to steal the car. You could have authorized, sent it certified, authorized mail. (laughs) (laughs) Then someone would have delivered it to to me in person. Well, you certainly got the cocaine I sent because you're having (laughs) trouble with words. Oh, who's this beauty over here? That's my ex-wife, Cheryl. Not oh, wait, that one. I think he's talking about me. I'm talking about the reserved broad over here. You look like a Lilith. Yeah, I mean, that's my name. I'm, a Lil- I'm Lilla. Hey, guys. New plan. I'm staying here. I don't know if that would be good for the time stream if Jeff stays here in Bible times. Uh, why don't you make, like, a painting and the oil? That was pretty good. <laughs> that actually was a good one. I gotta <laughs> yeah, it to you. Yeah, it was. I guess we still have some things in common, like our senses of humor. Cheryl. Doc. <laughs> Let's go make love in those bushes over there. I can't think of anything I'd rather do more. Our marriage is fixed. All right, now listen. Jardy, you got to make sure that everything's okay here. You're the hero now. Whoa, 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 Doc. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. I off to have sex with a man's wife, the best kind of sex. Okay, uh, well, listen, I got, uh, I got a guitar, I got a, a can-do attitude, um, mm-hmm. and I'm real small. Any suggestions? I I got a suggestion, Jick Fly. Oh boy! Why don't you make like a tr- a turtle? Yeah, and then leave slowly. Human, call Jiff. I'm going to stop you there. What is it? Ma- you are not Mrs. good at this. Fizzle, what? You are not good at this. Maybe you're not good at things. No, I'm pretty good at stuff. I'm an angel, oh. supernatural creature. You have a tough time with these expressions. You should probably abandon it. Well. 
Maybe you should. Nope. Make like. A- nope. Don't do it. It won't. It's not going to end the way you think it's going to end. Why don't you make like a carpet and just lay on the ground no, and then vacuum? Not good. <laughs> no. What? There's a two-parter. Yeah. Not good. Hey, uh, hey, Lilith. Uh. So. Paramount Executive, I have a pitch for a film. Okay, dazzle me. It's 1985. Keep going. Ah, there's a young boy, Marty McFly. Oh, I'm putting my cigar down. Yes, he has a friend named Emmett Brown, who's a doctor. I like it, I'm thinking of the taxi guy. Yes, my early idea would be cocaine-powered, but let's just go with nuclear-powered cars. More family-friendly. Yes, he steals plutonium from terrorists. Real anti-Middle East. It'll go re- great with Reaganites. Morally Robin Hood sound. Go yes, on. Yes, he goes back in time accidentally. I hear Huey Lewis and the news playing. Yes, to get his parents together. Right. Nice Crispin go- Glover. Make him a household name. That he's going to be a star forever. Continue. And then he has to get back to the future. I made it up entirely on my own. I don't get... Wait, he, what does that mean he has to get back? Because he's in the, the past future. and he's got to get past. back to the future. Back to the future. Yeah, he's got to get back to the present. But the future's doesn't... in the future. No, the, I mean, it's, it should be back to the present, but uh, it's right. because it's but the future. But he's in the past, then yeah, he's going yeah, back to the, the future, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, the present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That part's convoluted. Oh, I'm, I'm, let me tell you, I, I've, I've got it in with the, the big guy upstairs. I'm actually one of the big guys upstairs. What are you, what are you talking about? I'm, I mean, literally an angel. Whoa, oh, wait a minute. I'm like an archangel. I'm yeah. kind of the only... Are you the archangel Gabriel? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like me and Michael. We're the two most popular. Oh, well, why did you say so? Oh, I didn't, I didn't want to rest on my laurels. I didn't want to use my name. Right. I wanted to pitch just my idea. All right. Would you care for some cocaine? Oh, yes, of course. Well, let's check in. <laughs> what was the plan here? Oh again? no! Listen, I was just—I uh, was just going to ask Lilith. Uh, yeah, I mean, you seem like kind of a musical gal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> she I like absolutely to sing and play does. Guitar. I, I, if you have an interest in going out on tour with me, uh, maybe with a few other ladies who like to play music. You mean? Uh, I think we could really start something here. Can that's I? my girl you're talking to, Jick Fly. Uh, can I do um, Irish that's, melodies, that's, like you know, my sort of mixed <laughs> with uh-huh. rock? I, I love everything I'm hearing. It, to me, what I picture is like a bunch of animals who are being saved from being killed in like a song yeah. that you would in, sing. You know what? And we could maybe I call it like In the Arms of an Angel because after McZeal. To me, this seems like <laughs> the, only, the only natural for Christ's sake. Way, way for you and me to get away from uh, Jif over here. Okay, let's get in the time machine and go. I almost feel like I'm being ignored. <laughs> you are. You are. Oh. No one likes you. You're a bully and a cheat. Well, you should make like a bully and wow. a cheat. Why would you? And then... Why would you do it again? You could, uh, d- See? Now you feel the struggle, right? Yeah. So why do you keep doing well, it? Well, because it's going to work one day. You can't give up. Otherwise, you'd make like a a loser. You're and then right on top of the other you one? You wouldn't be boy, oh successful. Boy. Glutton for punishment. Don't you make like you know, it blood. feels like everyone's paired off here, except for poor Gif. Guess what, Gif? It's pronounced Gif. I got an idea. I know one other single person, actually, and it's Adam. <laughs> oh, that's oh. true. That's true. Adam is single. Oh, hey, guys. And you know what? It's oh, sorry, let me just preface that with I'm about to be sarcastic. Great. I get the leftover douche. And now I have decreed it with the power vested in me by Almighty God. It's Adam and Gif, not Adam and Eve. Poof. Guess what? You guys are a thing now. Uh, so, uh, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Probably just tap your tongue on it, I guess. Wait, well, like three three times? Five times? Nice. Right, just, just do it four. Hey, Lilith, um, while they're, while they're doing that, you want to, you know, go down there? I would love to. <laughs> Sheriff, what do you say you, me, and Jardy go back to the future, which is the yep. present, as we have discussed? Yep. It feels like the right yep, place yep, to be. I yep. definitely want to get away from whatever's going on over there. Yeah. So long, idiots. Have fun wherever you're going. 
Why don't you make like an orgasm and oh! Well, there you have it, everyone. The true story of creation. <laughs> now we all know how we got here and why we are who we are. <laughs> and why some of us don't do impressions. That's right. <laughs> and some of us should. And maybe all of us should not. <laughs> Janet Varney, you host the JV Club podcast, which is a wonderful oh, podcast. Thank you so much. Um, everyone should subscribe to that and listen to it. It's very uh, uh, charming and touching uh, and sweet and entertaining podcast. Oh, Paul. Oh, uh, is, there oh, any, is there anything you would like to promote? Uh, ooh, I think by this time probably we're in the middle of airing season two of You're the Worst on FXX. FXX? Check don't just Don't just go to FX. Go to FXX. Throw another X in there. Throw it is around X. the corner from being triple X. Oh, shit. Ooh, yeah. And eventually that means Timberly Hill will see it. Oh, yes. In let's say 25, 25 years. years. That's right. <laughs> And you are, where can people find you online? Uh, at Janet Varney, JanetVarney.com. Those should suffice. You're on Instagram sometimes. Oh, yeah. That's the JV Club. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I forget that that's it's a free. thing, and then, well, I, uh, yeah. and then I go on it and surprise that's myself. Right. Surprise yourself, yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. Victor, so, where can people find you online? Well, Paul, <laughs> you know the answer to that. It's puppets and shit. That's it's the right. letter N. Shit. On YouTube. Go to YouTube. Subscribe. Now, it's not N for the N-word. Is that, is that correct? Oh, my. <laughs> you know, it was not It was not meant to be. I don't want people to think this is a racist account. Uh, no, it's not. It is, okay. but it is meant to be shit for the shit word. Sure. Yeah. That is For the clear. S-word. It's yes, the S-word. The S-word. For shit. Uh, no. Puppets N? <laughs> shit? Wow. I feel like... <laughs> Have ruined I ruined it for you? One fell swoop. <laughs> I just want to change my entire... Go to YouTube, subscribe before I delete the channel. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything you'd like to promote? Uh, as I have autumn approaches. My one man show, James, which is <laughs> opening in Boston. Clap him in. <laughs> Clap him in. It's opening in Boston. And Previews in Boston. <laughs> and, and, and then on to the Great White Way. Yeah. And I want to uh, promote uh, my friend Evan Schletter. <laughs> who is, uh, if you go to his uh, website, evanschletter.com, sure. and purchase all his music because Evan Schletter is only oh, oh, the best. That's, this is weird. But <laughs> 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 you save me some time later on. <laughs> Colleen, yes. where can people find you online? Uh, as per usual, Colleen Sm or Colleen Smee. Mm -hmm. It's just C O L L E E N S M I. At, that's the Twitter one. Mm hmm. Um, and it'll be up and running by then. Uh, uh, my first time pod. It's first is spelled out. Uh, that's also the Twitter handle. It's a podcast that we're in. By the time this airs, we'll be rolling and it's, rocking. Yes, being assembled now. Yeah, uh, hosted by myself and Mary Jo Smith, and it's a uh, it's a storytelling show about people's first times doing various things. So not just sex, not which just a sex. lot of times you think your first time. Yeah, you automatically we did that. Go to sex. We did first time question did sexuality, it. and we right. did like first time. I'm Got a pet, first time, won an award, fun, nice stuff, good fun storytellers, all that kind of action. I look forward to it. Yeah, I cannot yeah, wait yeah. to listen to it. Sure. And where can people find you online? Oh, you already said. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Image Letter has been plugged on <laughs> to me. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for listening to the show. Please rate us on all the places that you rate podcasts if you're looking for a thing to say. You can say this verbatim. Oh, man. I looked at myself in the mirror and thought, <laughs> you're a terrible person. Then I remembered I listened to Spontaneous Nation, <laughs> and I was redeemed in my own eyes, and I like to think, in the eyes of the world. Write that down word for word. Um, Spontaneous Nation Live happens again Saturday, October 3rd. These shows are a lot of fun there at Largo. We do all the same things we do here, except we're up and on our feet moving around. We have a wireless headset microphones. <laughs> we, uh, you can see the sound effects. that You will see the big, beautiful sound effects panel that engineer Ryan has made for us in person. It is a lot of fun. Janet, you've done these shows. Yes, so it's fun. It's fun. It's really, really it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So please come out to that. Thank you to... Oh, you can get tickets at paulftompkins.com slash live. Thank you to... Uh, oh, we have some donor shout-outs to thank you to. Thank you to... Griffin Newman dash Kyle, very fancy name. Mm. Griffin Newman Kyle with a hi and hyphen in the middle. 
Thank you very much for donating $100 Woo-hoo. to Spontaneous Nation to help keep it going. Thank you also to Al- Alex Oldhauser. <laughs> He's not a new Hauser, guys. He's an old Hauser. Alex Oldhauser also donated $100 a year. Well, thank you very much, Woo-hoo. Alex. And thank you to Nathan Diffie. Nathan Diffie also donated $100. And you can see Nathan Diffie's artwork. He does a, a little That's poster so for every episode. They're all really, really cool. I have posted them all online. Um, go check them out on the Earwolf, uh, on the uh, Spontaneous Nation page on uh, on Facebook. Um, and there's also a Spontaneous Nation group there where you can discuss stuff. And of course, go to the Earwolf forums where you can discuss the episodes. And you can ask, uh, you can answer the questions that are asked of our guests. A lot of those are really fun to uh, to read. People's different responses to those questions. So please do check that out. Thank you to everyone for listening to the show. Please spread the word of the show. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, Woo-hoo. which this is. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting us. Goodbye forever until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in presenti. Good Latin, Paul. Good Thanks, Latin. James. Thanks, James. Thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget, Saturday, October 3rd, Spontaneous Nation Live at Largo at the Coronet in West Hollywood. Improvisers Drew Massey, Colleen Smith, and Victor Yarrett, and special interview guest Susanna Hoffs. This is not to be missed. For tickets, go to paulftompkins.com slash live. She is amazing. She is delightful. Uh, she is a great talker too. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to interview her. Um, and as always, there are special moments that happen in the live show that do not get podcast. You have to see them in person. And Susanna Hoffs and I are going to sing a song together that I, it's a crazy selection. I'm very excited about it. Um, so come and see this, you guys. It's nothing but a good time. We do the show on its feet, running around. After the show, we do a meet and greet. We'll have a table set up. Come and say hi. We'll sign stuff, whatever. Or you can just say hello. Um, and there's posters by Nathan Diffie for sale. Nathan Diffie does these posters every month. And he does posters for pretty much every episode of the show so far. Um, he's an amazingly talented guy. And this poster he's done for the October show. Please go to the Facebook page and look up uh, this poster in particular because it is amazing. Um, And we'll have those actual posters for sale. And free stickers. For tickets, go to paulftompkins.com slash live. Uh, For Nathan Diffie, look him up online. If you have any graphic needs, that's Nathan Diffie, D-I-F-F-E-E. And for free stickers, come to the show. Saturday, October 3rd. paulftompkins.com slash live. Merry Christmas! I'm Ho-Ho, the naughty elf, and I know it's not Christmas, so I don't give a shit. I live at the North Pole where I have to make duck toys for shitty kids and it makes me wish I could kill myself, but I'm immortal! See you forever. The only thing that keeps me going is my favorite podcast with special guest Lauren Lapkus. Oh, it's so good. I love it. I want to marry it. Every week's like a whole new show where a different comedian is the host and Lauren is the guest. It makes me so excited I want to kill a cat and Get its bones and eat them for dinner. Yum. Anyways, listen to this clip. Your gaze is so <laughs> okay, judgmental. I know. I just, no. Inside, you have a perfect body. You just don't take care of it. We, if we could just carve you out of there, we'd have a perfect statue. But you down those flaming hot Cheetos and so don't. Good. They're disgusting. So good. You talk about my tan hands. Well, you have red fingers. That's the sign of a true snacker. Did you like that? Did ya? You better like it or this year Santa's coming down your chimney and dumping coal over your dumbass house. I can make him do that. Check out with special guest Lauren Lapkus today at Earwolf.com on Howl or your favorite podcast app, you dumb little butthole. Ho ho! This has been an Earwolf Media Production. Executive Producers Jeff Ulrich, Scott Ackerman, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf Radio Boom.com. The Wolf Dead.